Welcome to End of the Dark Room with host Kay Bear and Michaela Robertson. This week we have esteemed photographer Eleanor Carucci in the studio with us. Eleanor is very well known for work such as Closer and Mother. Closer focuses on her very intimate relationship with her mother and Mother, the series, focuses on her relationship with her children and the harsh and raw reality of being a mother of two. And with that, here we go. Because uh, it's just questions. Um, so a big part of your work is like your children and photographing them with mother. Um, do you ever get questions about your relationship with your children, the closeness because of some of the images and um, like what are some of the questions that they have for you and what are some of your like rebuttals for what they have to question about it? Um, actually, I think I actually get less questions than I thought I will be. Okay. And I was wondering about that because when I was photographing this body of work, I was worried. I was worried to, first of all, not to damage the kids in any way. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I didn't want it to be like provocative to the point where people only are talking about ex exploiting the kids and all that. So I don't know if it's thinking about people like Sally Mann and mm -hmm. people that had photographed. I don't know if it's the Instagram <clears throat> Flicker effect that mm -hmm. people see pictures of everybody's and everybody's families and children all the time these days, even those, even though those are more on the surface and usually mm -hmm. just showing happy faces, happy moments. Um, so I got some, of course, but not, to be honest, as much as I thought I will be. Okay. Because I was definitely, like, when you had brought up um, Sally Mann being one of your influences, right. that's immediately what I thought of was the backlash that she received from photographing her children in that way. So I was like, wow, I wonder if because of that, maybe there wasn't as much, or if you still received oh, so there was, backlash. There, were, there was a lot of nudity in the okay. work. And I okay. decided to edit out the nude images mm -hmm. of my kids. They, they exist, some of those images, but um, I took them out of, of the body of work. So maybe because there wasn't nudity of them, mm -hmm. it was less controversial. And have you ever considered release? You said during the talk something about like when the kids turn 18, do you think that will happen? Or do you think that at that point it just won't even matter? Uh, I mean, this is the future. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to know. I mean, it will be something that I will talk to them about mm -hmm. and maybe publish. I do feel though that I managed to talk about the things I wanted to talk about in Mother without those. So, mm -hmm. you know, we always question are we compromising our visions because of things like considering other people's feelings? Or, and so I don't know if it would be necessary, but maybe there will be another body of work created that this will be related to somehow about them. I don't know. Which you one? were saying in your talk, I just want to make sure I talk to them. <laughs> you were saying in your talk, um, that whenever you were showing the one photo of your son peeking, um, that he he called you a pervert? There was this one guy. Yeah. yeah. Have yeah. you, besides that, have you had any other type of backlash for photos like that? Or was it just the one instance? There were some, in some of the talks, this photograph um, got people a little upset. And I know that in some of the... Um, articles, or I could read the comments, mm -hmm. and some people don't like this picture. Mm -hmm. um, and they also interpret it, which is their right, in a different way, thinking about oral sex, or I mean, they, they take it to another place. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's part of putting the work out there. And, you know, people, whether it's like sexual or other things, people interpret work the way they want to interpret it. But I do still think that this is not like an extreme moment of an unusually open family. I think it's it's just something kids do. A lot of kids, they look at different parts of their parents' bodies, and I think it's okay to let them do it. Maybe not touch a different parts, but <laughs> yeah. just to look in my underwear and is I think is something healthy and it's not okay to be like, don't look there! <laughs> There's like something horrible there. Just mm -hmm. some pubic hair and a vagina. 
because you make it a big deal, then it becomes a big exactly. deal. Exactly. So, and kids are curious. They want. They look at their bodies. They look at other people, but they can't look at. So you have to distinguish other adult bodies. But for me to tell them, this is our body. This is who we are. And also, I think it's important for kids to see nudity, so they don't only see it in magazines or porn when they're older. Mm -hmm. They actually see real bodies of real adults. And it's, I think, a part of their education. It's a part of telling them about the world. This is a real... It's a lot more open than... My mom was fairly (laughs) open, but um, especially being... I wouldn't say we were conservative, but, like, growing up in a more conservative area, Mm -hmm. I mean, that kind of ideology, it was just not seen. So that is... That is going to be really interesting because, I mean, up until I came to art school, I mean, seeing somebody naked would just be like, oh, you're naked. (laughs) Like, oh, my gosh, it's not just like, I mean, now I'm like, yep, it's just another body. Right. It's a lot more normalized to me, but beforehand, not as much. Well, it is interesting because you had said during the talk that that was the one photo that some people had a problem with. And it was always one of my favorite photos for that reason. (laughs) Thank you. it's, It's such like just if it's only weird if you make it weird and to have that understanding of the human body and looking at it not in that way and more just like this is just what your mother looks like and as we were leaving the talk I heard one of just I'll just say another classmate saying how she did have a problem with it and like talking about how uncomfortable it made her and and it was so interesting to me that even like in our liberal arts, like art right, college, right. there was still individuals that felt that way, right. um, which I was I, not I mean, expecting. I think, first of all, I came from a different culture. Yeah. And in the Israeli culture, even though it does become a little more conservative, but nudity was more common, especially among women. I didn't ever meet a woman who hasn't seen her mother naked until I moved to America. I would see my mom and my dad. Now that we're talking about it, have I seen my mom? <laughs> <laughs> you see, it's like, so I think it is, it is something that's more, much more common. Even in, in more conserv- conservative Middle Eastern countries, um, nudity among women is very common. But I also think that you should raise your kids up to your comfort level. That's true. And kids should know that their parents, even in, uh, when it comes to nudity, me and my husband are the same, but... In some things were very different, what's okay for me. And it's also okay if some parents don't feel comfortable about it. It's, it's, it's okay. Um, I think it, it's, a, it's, first of all, good to be who you are with your child and that the kids pick on it. Not to scare them, but to say, this is my limit. I'm not comfortable with that. It's mm-hmm. also okay. Uh, for me, this is me, this is my work. Mm-hmm. And I think it was a good thing for my kids um, to see us so comfortable with our bodies, not necessarily confident, but comfortable. Mm-hmm. But it's also okay, as long as you love your kids, kids have to accept who their parents are. And it's also okay if other people feel less comfortable, don't want to share certain yeah. parts of their bodies. So I'm not saying preaching. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but for me, it was a part of a positive experience of letting my kids be curious and, and ask questions and see my, my body. It's a lot of communication. I think at, le- at least from you also talking about photographing other people in your family. Um, just cause I, that was one of the first things that I noticed when I was looking at your work, especially in closer, I believe, um, with how intimate you were with your mother. Cause in our, like you yeah. said, in our culture, it's, you don't see your mother <laughs> naked at, at all. I don't think I've ever seen my mother naked. And it's, I mean, I don't understand how weird it is for me. Because uh, growing up, because there is some contradiction. When growing up, America seemed to be so open and liberal. I mean, seeing I think Madonna and Britney parts. Spears. <laughs> so you have more extremes in American culture. So growing up as an Israeli girl from Jerusalem, I thought America was the most open and liberal place. So... This is interesting for me that those extremes exist in the American culture uh, because, as I said, I've seen my mom. I've seen both my parents, but all my friends have seen their moms naked. Almost, almost everyone. I feel like that's like a, especially, I mean, I grew up with uh, an older brother, so I feel like, like while I was growing up, since I was a little bit younger, I also feel like there was a little bit more like that, oh, now there's 
a boy here. Like, we're just going to keep right. everything right. divided and private because um, yeah, I think that's just how my mom wanted it to be. I mean, right. or, like, if she's, like, out of the sh- – like, she's a little bit more comfortable with it now, now that I'm – 21 right so i mean it's a little bit more open but at least as a kid it was very like oh sorry <laughs> totally right. like flashed you for a second right. it wasn't like oh whatever right i live here it's my house yeah well it's, it, it's interesting for me because i um i have looked at your work before for like inspiration for my own work um because i talk i think a lot about attachment theory and the way that we're raised and how it affects our relationship with people as we get older Definitely. um so I've tried to, like, just to, like, experiment and try to, like, think through the, pho- the photographic process. I've tried to talk my mom into, like, photographing with me. And, like, I've showed her some of your pictures. And she's like, that's just, I'm happy for her and the relationship that she has with her children. But I just, I could never imagine. Uh, she's like, that's not the kind of family we are. And I'm like, what does that mean? But I also think it's just the separation and generational between, because I think there's definitely in our parents' generation, this, like, they still hold on to a little bit of, like, the traditional... Constructed. Constructed <laughs> lifestyle and families, but now we have such open minds in this modern age I, that I we... actually feel my kids are more conservative than oh, really? in some ways. Um, and in some ways, I was even more conservative than my parents because they're the product of the 60s. And, True. In a way, mm. so... I don't know. But I really also believe... That love and closeness and intimacy can happen in different cultures and in different, I mean, there are the Orthodox Jews, and mm-hmm. I know that there are some dysfunctional families, like in secular, and some families that are very close and very loving. Mm-hmm. So it's not necessarily a condition for love and caring and giving. And different people have different comfort levels and, and different cultural background, different beliefs, or religion, or because of the certain comfort level that you kind of get out with your subjects, do you think your work requires a, a decent amount of patience? Patience or tolerance? Like, 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 uh, like taking time and like allow, like waiting for them to be ready to, to get to a certain level. Or Because I know you have certain family members right. or even like with your editorial work, you're talking to a lot of families that have been through a lot and you're photographing them. Sometimes people just are not willing to open up. Do you, do you think you have to be patient for that, or is it... If I as a photographer... Yeah. Yes. I mean, I have to be patient, I have to be respectful, I have to be sensitive. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have to maybe know how to push a little and ask for a little bit more, but with with a limit. or And it also depends, you know, if it's my child, if it's my husband, or if it's a family. If it's a family I just met, I'm very, very respectful. And I rather have missed some. Sometimes I regret it after the shoot, but I rather miss some good pictures than feeling that I'm like exploiting you, yeah. or mm-hmm. taking advantage. I have less problem with my own family because I know how much I give them, mm-hmm. and I'll do anything for them. And I know how hard I work to make <laughs> to pay for all their expenses. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel more, maybe even entitled, but I feel it's okay to ask, it's okay to push, it's okay to get upset. But like, not now. I'm like, why not now? Um, which I'll never do with strangers yeah so there are different uh, limits but of course you have to be sensitive and even loving it's not like I love the strangers that I photograph Mm -hmm. for magazines but when I do have those photo shoots happen there is a lot of I know it sounds a little corny but there is a lot of love and compassion in my heart for the Mm -hmm. time that the shoot happens and sometimes it stays forever some people that really touch me um so it comes from you know an open heart that's That's awesome um i have a question so i love photographing the people around me as well i photograph my friends and my fiance almost exclusively Mm -hmm. um (laughs) and I, i always feel like i get a lot of like really good memories or experiences from that i just want to know what is your best experience coming from photographing your family um, I think something happened, so, um, in order to convince my daughter to be photographed, especially when she got older, I did some just 
quote unquote pretty pictures for her. <laughs> and um, there is something very special when I take a picture for her, so it's not for me, it doesn't have to talk about the themes of whatever. <laughs> it's just a beautiful picture for her. And then I retouch it. And when I show it to her, I feel it's so empowering. She's like, Mom! And she almost like see the way I see her. Mm-hmm. And those are really beautiful pictures. And then she can also share them on Instagram. Or, and there is something so beautiful about that. Maybe those not will not go to my body of work. Maybe some of them will eventually. But to to show someone that they're beautiful or to give someone a picture that will empower them. I'm so excited because <laughs> <laughs> that is lit. Anytime somebody asks me, like, why did you get into photography or why do you love photography? That's what I tell people, like, taking portraits of someone and showing them, like, the beauty that you see in them and how right. beautiful that, like, that they just are is the most rewarding part of photography for me or at least photographing my friends and the people right. around me. And I think especially for the... I'm going to say something. The American teenage girl. Mm -hmm. It's so hard here. It's so hard to be a teenage girl in the American culture Mm -hmm. with so much pressure on beauty and looks and being popular. It's just grueling. Um, It's especially, you know, I'm especially careful. Not that I'm not careful with my son, but it's, it's hard. It's hard. I, I, as, a, as an American teenager, <laughs> I agree. I agree. <laughs> Do um, either of the children ever take any like creative liberties while you're like setting up a shower? Are they, are they ever like throwing out ideas? Are either one of them creative with art or anything like that? Um, they are not so much in, in the arts or artistic. Oh, okay. Thank God. No, <laughs> <laughs> they will be a lawyer and a doctor. They said I'm Jewish. Um, but they are, <laughs> yes, they can. I mean, they can suggest different things or they can call me. My son, so it's different. My son can call me when things are happening. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's like, mom, take a picture. If there's a light or a situation. My daughter gets creative because she helps me to photograph a lot of her friends. Oh, okay. And she even pushed me to pursue a whole other project with some of her friends from elementary school. It became a separate project that I've been doing for seven years now or six. Um, So she, when she has friends over, she knows now photographing them became photographing their generation because so much of their lives is about Mm -hmm. their friends. And so she will get uh, art created, not art created (laughs) that way. She'll call me and she's like, mom, you can photograph this, you can photograph her, this is okay. And then I'm emailing them the pictures and I tell them if I ever ever use them, I'll reach out to you and, and ask. She gets creative that way. That's, That's cool. awesome. Yeah. Um, I went quite... Right, right, right. Okay, so <laughs> your husband helping you with your photography, does that keep you guys a little bit closer, or does it... That's the only thing I'm with. No. <laughs> <laughs> because I'll, I'll have my fiancé help me, and he's he's never picked up a camera before I met him. And bless his heart, he tries. He tries so hard. And I'll be like, and I'll be like, all right, I'm gonna take a picture. Look at it. This is the frame. This is like the angle. Right. And then I'll be like, all right, now I'm gonna be the model. Take the picture. <laughs> and then he'll be like, how? And I'm like, oh my god, what do you mean? Yeah, no, it's not easy. That's why you know it's hard to take good pictures and what we take for granted. Um, but my husband went to art school with me. He did four right, years right. of photography. He did photography professionally. Um, and he still photographs more than me every day. Really? And we are, you know, more than 20 years after art school. So I don't know if I got lucky this way <laughs> or I picked him for, for that, but he is like almost as professional, maybe as professional because he has the education and the experience and we go see all the photography shows, and he's around so many photographers, so many events and talks, and that's so, so he is. That's awesome. Yeah, that's he so is fun. A clip. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is kind of on a different track, but I, I heard you during your talk say that um, the professors in uh, Israel are a lot tougher. Um, they would make me cry. Yeah, well, that's what I'm wondering. Do you think, um, having learned there and now you teach here in America, 
do you think that our professors should be any tougher? Because we have heard rumors also around here that some of our professors have not become soft. I'm not saying that, Eric. But, <laughs> but I'm saying that, Eric. But I'm saying it's it. Um, that he's not as tough as he used to be. Do you think that's useful or do you think it's counter? intuitive being tough on the students that's such a big question that my husband and I had thousands of hours discussing <laughs> um, I don't know I mean I know maybe for sure um, and this is something I demand of myself that we have to be a hundred percent like when you're in court and you have to say the, the, the whole truth and nothing but mm-hmm. you have to be honest and tell your students everything and you can sugarcoat it Mm -hmm. Uh, but there are different ways to deliver this honesty and so it doesn't necessarily have to be harsh or or rude or 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 very like destroying you in order to build you up Mm -hmm. but i do think that um the fact that my professors were so honest and sometimes cruel it did build me up, but it can also destroy you. I've seen some people who went to art school with me and just stopped taking pictures. Mm-hmm. So it's it's hard to give the right answer. For sure, we have to have professors that will tell us the whole truth. The other problem in this culture, mm-hmm. uh, which is, is different in Israel, in Israel, everything is public education. And you do pay tuition, but it's like $2,000 a semester. There is a little wow. bit of a culture here where the student is the client. And some schools are businesses, and they don't want to lose the tuition. And so as teachers, we're being warned not to upset the student so much because the business aspect of the school doesn't want to lose the clients, the students. And this is a problem. That makes so sense. That's so infuriating. That makes so much That's actually problem. really annoying. So I want to be able to tell my students, and I'm, I'm a gentle person, but I have to be honest, even if it upsets them and hurt them. But if I'm afraid that I might lose my job and I'm not being backed up by the school because they don't want the students to be upset because of money reasons, then we have a problem in our culture, in education, in higher education. Absolutely. It's funny because I know that there's definitely certain students that think even some of our professors take it too far, but then there's other students that feel like they're not being challenged or questioned enough, Mm -hmm. and they'll turn to other students to question them because they feel like the professors aren't being totally honest with them and that they're just telling them kind of what they want to hear and molding them to be nice about it. Um, but I definitely remember an experience freshman year where I cried during a crit because this woman that was a visiting professor just absolutely tore me apart. But I don't think I would take that critique back. Like, I, I, I think no, I needed to hear it's that. It's also good to, to be confronted with people that don't like our work. Mm-hmm. I absolutely. have a really nice following, but there are many people that don't like my work. And it's good to have this experience while you're in school. Um, I mean, if this is all you get, then it's becoming difficult. But it's good to meet the people who tell you, I don't see anything you work. And they see it from a point of view that they just don't connect to it. Mm-hmm. It's good to Definitely. have to deal with it. Yeah, it's, harsh it's, critique. Yeah. I, I recently had a harsh critique. And at the time, I was like, my life is over. I wasted time. <laughs> no. Like, this, like I'm never going to be better than what this was. And then... <laughs> I started making newer work, and like I, it was obviously the push I needed. It it right. really helped me in the end, but sometimes sometimes you just don't want to hear it, but it, it needs right. to be put out there. Right. right, and I sometimes definitely feel that the students, and it's hard. You think that we as professors, it's hard when you see work up there in the world, and you really like the person, but you have to break the news to them. The work is not good, and sometimes I feel when I don't give up, on some students and I push them and maybe they hate me in some days and I get over my need to be loved by my students and I tell them what I need to tell them at the end of the semester I'm usually grateful that I did because it pays off and they do much better work even if they had some crying or, or yeah. <laughs> I didn't cry for that I waited until he left and I was like oh, oh my god oh, wow. 
I cried in front of everybody. It was our first all department critique of our freshman of our sophomore year. Yes. And I was told that I had a male gaze and that I was objectifying women. Yeah. Michaela is a very strong fear. This <laughs> was I, her worst fear. And it tore me down and I'm sobbing in front of everybody trying to take notes. But that's <laughs> like, yeah, I'll yeah. remember that. That's yeah. okay. That's okay. You have to not completely shut down and What's what, something in this crying? And you sometimes it's okay to just stop and say, like, let's take it from here next week. And but well, so Eric came up to me afterward and he was like, "Wow, you didn't even leave the room." <laughs> I was like, well, "I don't want to walk out." <laughs> you know, like I needed to hear. Do you want to go next? Um, sure. We're just gonna skirt. take another right turn. Yeah, excellent. excellent. Turn. Skirt. <laughs> Oh, you're talking about how you've completely switched to digital. Do you still use film or do you prefer to, or do you still use film, but do you prefer digital now? I, no, I stopped using film. Completely. Completely. Goodbye. Goodbye. Wow. <laughs> um, part of the reason why I did that, I was very nervous about switching to digital because technically I can get overwhelmed and like by technical elements. So I felt that if I had the film cameras there, I will never do digital the w- the right way, like all the way. Mm-hmm. I would just fall back to film. I would be like, oh, I'm nervous, especially on assignment work when I am nervous. So I sold everything wow. <laughs> and I only had digital. I'm like, I have to make it work. Otherwise, if it's there, I'll go to it because I'm nervous. Um, but I love digital. It's been, it, it's allowed my work to grow. Um, also, I spent two decades in a dark room, and I really don't miss it. Um, <laughs> so I, I really love digital. Eric I Weeks think. is crying downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't think for other people, people can choose to work in whatever yeah, is yeah. good for them. So if I'm like anti-film or digital or <laughs> medium format mm-hmm. or whatever, but for me, digital has been. Especially, it allowed me of more of a collaboration and openness. Like the example I gave in the talk, where yeah. I sh- photograph certain situations, and if it's very uh, sensitive, I can share it uh, with the person, and, and they can ask for it to be deleted. Um, but I, I love digital. Other than the highlights mm-hmm. that are still not as beautiful as they are in film, and I have to work on them. Uh, overall, I really enjoy. Digital. I like digital as well. I feel like um, I like to do a lot of like senior portraits, commercial work, and it's I. It's just so much easier for me to be like, this is surefire, not gonna fall apart. Nothing can <laughs> right. get messed up. No, I can right take weeks. yeah, I can take <laughs> three hundred photos and give you like a solid twenty and not be worried. Where like if I shot like two rolls of film, I'd be like, oh my god, what if the light leaks? What right. if I mess up developing dust? Right. Scratches. Dust. <laughs> my, worst, my worst enemy. Um, oh, good. Love that. Um, <laughs> Hi. Very professional here. <laughs> um, do you, you had talked a little bit about during the talk, and I really love that you brought up the financial aspect of our work. Yes. Um, because as... Okay, bye. <laughs> as... as um, Especially photographers, I feel like there are different art paths that you can take that are more lucrative than others. And when I every every other one, yeah. (laughs) Um, Especially with like the more fine art photography versus versus the commercial. Was there ever a point where um, you thought that you might have to do something else? Because I know you said with the belly dancing and you were doing your personal work, but times were getting tough. Um, What was kind of your way of sneaking into commercial or um was there any like thoughts during that time that like just helped push you to keep making work um first of all I always have thoughts about will I be able to make a living of this in a year in five years in ten years Mm -hmm. I even went to Trader Joe's and spoke to the people who work there and I'm like told my husband Maybe I'll have to work here in a year or two because there, you never know. You never yeah. know. And the art world can be so determined by trends and who you know and how old you are and how you look and what kind of money you came from, which is not my case. I don't mm-hmm. come from a family that has a lot of money. Um, so it's something that's constant, especially when you have kids and a lot of bills to pay. Um, but 
the need to make money also pushed me because I was so insecure about taking sign at work and one of the reasons why I took it was like I another way to make a living. I can't keep saying no like a stupid person. I have to like, <laughs> just get over myself and do it. Mm -hmm. um, so there is something good about this hunger. Like I need to make it work for money and for other reasons. Mm -hmm. And and when you get paid to do something and it becomes your livelihood, you can really, as I said in the talk, devote yourself to it completely. Mm -hmm. um, I have seen what happened to the people who decided to take a path of working in something that's more stable, that is not in the art, and doing the photography on the side, it doesn't it doesn't work this way. Yeah. Maybe for a year or two, but overall in the Um oh my gosh, what was it? I'm sorry. <laughs> right, you're back back to the kids. How has photographing since you've had your children changed that wasn't worded well. <laughs> Since having your kids, how has your photographic process changed? With photography, <clears throat> them or just well, I guess in just in general, or how? Yeah, just in general. That's the question. Um, I think, and I did talk a little bit about it, that it did make me more. I don't want to say something because they're very, very sensitive, wonderful artists that never have kids, but for me. To raise a human being made me even more sensitive and open to the ranges of emotions of other people. And I think it made me see and feel more of the world around me, of people, not only of children, and be more compassionate and less, less judgmental. Um, of myself, because you have to forgive yourself when you're a parent, because you make mistakes daily. And as I said, the photography became the least of my worries. Um, and of other people. Um, so it expanded my existence as a human being and, and as an artist. That's awesome. I do have one more question. <laughs> my fiance has this beautiful curly hair. It's it's <laughs> probably longer than mine. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. He is, it's beautiful. He has beautiful hair. Yeah. He will not brush it, so I have to brush it for him <laughs> because I love him and I want him to look nice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, about how many years did you have to brush your child's hair until she started to brush her own hair? Because oh, I keep God. trying to be like, Santo, just do it. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'll do it. And then he'll, like, get ready. I'm like, I can clearly see you didn't brush your hair. And he was like, I, it's fine. It's like a mat in it. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know if the numbers of years. <laughs> so now you, I'm not going to give you the number of years. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, fiance, get over yourself. And brush your own hair. You hear that, Santo? <laughs> We're begging you. Please. Do it. You do it. it. You can do it. <laughs> Stranger is telling you this. You have to now. I'm going to be like, hi, honey. Listen to this podcast we talked <laughs> this about. Is Eleanor Carucci asking K. Oh, hey. sorry, sorry. Santo. Santo's of your answer. Asking Santo. Santo, please brush your hair. I am begging you. <laughs> it will make our lives much better. It will make life. everyone, even Eleanor's life. <laughs> my life, personally. <laughs> this is a PSA for Santa. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Okay. I, I think we got this. But that's time. all the time we have. <laughs> is it really? It is. It's been 45 minutes. Whoa. Oh, really? oh my it was God. It so fun to talk to you guys. It was so thank fun to you talk so to thank you. <laughs> I love when they say that. <laughs> and they're like, so much fun. I'm like, oh, thank you. I know, it is. Thank you. It it's is. fun. <laughs> Well, I am just absolutely starstruck after that interview with Eleanor. It was really amazing, and she was so fun and easy to talk to. Uh, I kind of wish that she was my teacher. <laughs> Honestly. Hey, Eleanor, switch to PCAD. We'd absolutely love you. <laughs> we would. We would pay you in love. Love and hugs. and um... I can't promise you money, but <laughs> I don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you guys for listening. This was a lot of fun. Uh, being able to interview other photographers and get their perspectives is uh, something that is really, is something that we really cherish and we hope you enjoyed this. It has absolutely been such an incredible honor and privilege to get this opportunity and we can't wait to share more insightful and fun conversations with you guys. Peace out, y'all.